it's uh, it's 4 p.m. We're going to go ahead and get started. The this is a, a special session of the uh, Del Norte Solid Waste Management Authority, Wednesday, January 23rd, 2019. Uh, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Cowan. Here. Commissioner Greeno. Here. Commissioner Howard. Present. Chair and score. I am here. Would you all please stand for the pledge of allegiance? Mr. Greeno, would you lead us, please? Absolutely. And begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Any member of the public may address the Solid Waste Management Authority on any matter that is on or off our agenda. After receiving recognition from myself, would you please give your name and address for the record and try to limit your uh, public comment to three minutes. Do we have any general public comment this afternoon? Eileen Cooper, Delmar County. As a follow-up to last meeting, at the previous meeting, it was stated by Recology representatives that sending recycling trucks out only two times a month rather than every week does not reduce, does reduce, excuse me, does reduce recycling contamination because you don't have the recycling sitting right next to the regular trash all the time. The recycling carts are approximately half full. That was phone conversation that I had quite a while ago. Um, recycling does not rot. It would save substantial costs. Larger carts can be provided where needed, and the benefits are reduced contamination of recycling, reduced fuel costs to travel around neighborhoods by half, reduced worker time to travel around neighborhoods by half. Recology stated that the trucks they hire come through every week empty otherwise, so they need to fill them up every other every week. However, this is irrelevant because you can alternate the neighborhood pip pickups so that there is the same amount of recycling being carried back each week. They will be picking up the same amount of recycling on a monthly basis, but they would be doing so more efficiently traveling around each neighborhood on a bi-weekly basis. Trash would still be picked up on a weekly basis unchanged. There is no good reason not to try this. And on thinking about the general meeting and to all together, perhaps Hambros would do a better job. They have ownership of a lot of useful industrial space that could employ a local people. And they stated that they could, the last bid they made was less than the current one that we have. So thank you. Thank you. No, no, we don't need to know that at all. All right, any other general public comment this afternoon? Seeing none, we'll close public comment and uh, we're going to go ahead and go on to our agenda. We have under consent, we have the minutes from December 18th. Uh, interdepartmental transfer in the amount of 37,925.76 for sublease rental and interest payments, director's vacation requests, and a budget transfer in the amount of $101,156. A motion to have a second? Second. Any public comment on items on consent? Closing public comment, then would you please pull the vote? Commissioner Cohen? Yes. Commissioner Greeno? Yes. Commissioner Howard? Yes. Chair and score? Yes. We're going to adjust our, our uh, meeting agenda slightly. Um, and if, if so, if you want to make note, we're going to take items 7 1, 3 1, and 6 4 before we move into um, our director's report. So we're going to uh, adjourn as the Solid Waste Management Authority and reconvene as the um, vehicle abatement authority please note that the members uh, have not changed as far as who is in attendance and we're going to go to item 7.1 um, and ask uh, Dominic Mello if he would come and address us from the uh, vehicle abatement service authority oh you guys hear me all right yeah 
Okay. So, uh, yeah, our third and fourth quarter report, business as usual with the AVA, um, standard toes and whatnot. And then, um, as you guys probably saw in the report, that that's, we've been rewarded the uh, Cal Recycle uh, grant. So that's augmenting our um, toes and, and allowing us to go into the woods and kind of pull out the ones that were out of sight that we knew that were there. And so, yeah, we're, we're sitting good right now with the AVA. You guys have any questions? Do you have one comment, Mr. Chair? Um, we get a lot of these type of reports throughout the county and Dom in particular is extremely responsive to all our needs and getting out there and getting these abandoned vehicles picked up in a very timely manner it makes community development department especially this program look really good so I got to thank you publicly mm -hmm. for all the efforts that you put in behind this thank you appreciate it yeah thank you anybody else okay so We'll, uh, we'll just receive and, and file your quarterly report, and we will, uh, uh, do we have any public comment on the AVA quarterly report? Seeing none, we'll close, and we will then adjourn as the AVA, and we'll reconvene as the Solid Waste Management Authority, and we will take up item 3.1, which is an associated item with uh, the grant that Dominic just mentioned, as well as other items. Uh, Thank you, Chair and Score. Uh, in July 2017, the Authority Board uh, uh, authorized a support letter uh, to the application that the county was submitting uh, for this uh, ranch cleanup grant. And there are a couple tasks in that grant that specifically uh, relate to this agency. The first is that there's uh, $5,765 of the grant resources to clean up and place traffic barriers at the Crescent City landfill because of their has been some dumping there and we'd like that to stop. Uh, also included is a development of outreach materials about proper management for manufactured homes, motor homes, trailers, and campers at the end of their life. And uh, we are regularly, we are now meeting regularly to try to strategize on the best way to clean up the landfill and to place those traffic barriers. So this is largely an informational item of a project that's already been approved. And I just wanted to keep you informed that this is adding to the uh, resources used to maintain and, and uh, control traffic at the landfill. And uh, I'd be happy to have Dominic come back up. He's gone. That was, I would have been happy to have Dominic. <laughs> but he, he referenced it in his report of being able to use these funds to, to expand the, uh, the, the, the cleanup of, of RVs and so forth throughout the county. Good. And we are trying to work with everybody who has an interest in that goal. So we're meeting with representatives from state parks, from uh, the road department, from um, uh, Tollywood Dune Stewards, all looking at, at how, and Pacific Power, because they have a uh, high tension power line that goes across the landfill property. And that's largely actually part of the issue is that the, the roads that they use to maintain the vegetation below those power lines are part of the ways that uh, vehicles are accessing the landfill property improperly. And for those of you who are listening at home and might be interested in off-road uh, recreation, the landfill is not appropriate for that kind of activity and uh, we are citing people and prosecuting if you're caught. So please do not trespass on the landfill property with any kind of vehicle. All right. Any questions? Sure. Any public comment regarding 3.1? All right, we'll move on then. Let's go to 6.4. And uh, since uh, Janet is here, instead of having you wait through the whole meeting, we appreciate you being here. Uh, uh, Mr. Ward, do you want to introduce? Uh, yes. I, I find it interesting even just to say the Tansy games. I feel like I'm, I'm introducing something from the Film Commission. but uh, uh, <laughs> It's a catchy title, isn't it? It is. Uh, and that was our impression. Uh, Janet Gilbert uh, asked to meet with us and to talk through the Tansy games and her idea for this. And uh, as the board may be aware, uh, Tansy ragwort is a noxious weed that grows uh, throughout the county and has bright yellow flowers and is fairly easily removed. But when it dries out, uh, cattle and other livestock can graze it and graze upon it, and it, it'll ultimately cause them to die. And that's a concern for everybody who has cattle ranches. And so there, the county has an ordinance 
that essentially requires uh, landowners to remove tansy from their property. And uh, since the transfer station opened in 2005, we've been receiving tansy ragwort from the general public for no charge, although we are paying Hambro to dispose of those materials. So, um, for instance, during 2017, um, the, uh, uh, we spent over $6,000, essentially, to help remove tansy ragwort. Now, of course, the tansy games are intended as a promotional activity to help inspire people to remove more tansy. So we could expect those costs to increase, but it's merely to support this general activity. With that, I'd like to invite Janet Gilbert up to uh, talk through this idea. Thank you. Um, first, uh, thank you for the opportunity to talk with you. And secondly, thank you for um, what you are already doing, which is providing the uh, free disposal to people. Uh, I am a 10 years resident, and when I first came to my new, new property, I thought, here was this beautiful yellow flower. Hmm. And I remember grabbing a bouquet of it, cutting it off, and putting it in a glass of water. And then I went to an ag resource district meeting, and I learned all about it, and I've been ripping it out of the ground ever since. So um, it is highly invasive. It's been here since the 1920s, so almost 100 years. Hmm. And um, it loves the Pacific Northwest. It, it loves cool, cloudy weather. It came from Western Europe, so it, it really enjoys that. Um, it, the ordinance was passed in 1977 because of substantial damage to horses, cattle, other livestock. Goats are also impacted. Sheep seem to do okay. Some ranchers would even um, put sheep into a field to kind of clear the field of the tansy before they would turn their, their other livestock out. So sheep are a little quirky there. Um, it is a biennial, so it has a two-year lifespan, and its first year is in a rosette stage that is actually very, very competitive. And by being a rosette, it is capable of um, outcompeting plants that want to try to grow around it. So it's a, it's a nasty little thing. Um, mostly toxic at the rosette stage, much more toxic at the rosette stage, but a, a generally unpalatable. So it's out there, but they don't usually like to eat it. Um, second year, the plant will grow, and it'll come up and um, if allowed and everything's right, it will grow taller than you are. Mainly what we see is about um, a meter high or so with a crown of flowers. Um, the seeds are wind dispersed. We have a lot of wind. Uh, they say typically maybe it will disperse only 30 to 50 feet, but with our wind, I would say that it can move substantially further. Um, it is Sometimes eating tansy is unavoidable by the livestock. And that is if the field is a hay field. And so then when they are cutting, cutting the fields and baling it all up, the, the tansy will get caught in the, in the bales. And drying, it becomes much more palatable to the animals. So then when it's fed to them, it is usually um, less than uh, 20 days, really, of eating, consecutively eating hay with tansy in it, with only 5% tansy in it, the animal will suffer um, uh, liver failure. And it's a terrible death. And sometimes a nickname for it is staggerwort, because the animal becomes very lethargic and ups ultimately collapses. Um, looks sort of like cirrhosis of the liver, with uh, the normal cells turning into like connective scar tissue and shuts the animal down. So I don't know this, but I would guess that that would make the animal unpalatable if you <laughs> had someone, an animal dying of uh, tansy disease. I doubt that you could cons have even harvest any of the meat. I think you'd have to just put the animal down and whatever you do with disposable of dead animals. Um, attempts have been made to control tansy with herbicides, but there are collateral damage to any time you're working with poisons, and especially if you want to try to do any kind of um, natural or organic farming, it's going to be in the way. And in biological controls have been implemented. Uh, what we've done is um, the cinnabar mo moth came in in 1959. It was introduced from Europe. And you might, you will see this if you're out harvesting tansy, you will still see the cinnabar moth out there. 
A uh, ragwort seed fly was introduced in 1966 and the ragwort flea beetle of Italy was introduced in 1969. This works more in the root system. The beetle, the larval stage are kind of going to feed on the roots. The fly is going to kind of feed on the leaves. But in nature, biological controls maintain a balance between the predator and the prey and the population numbers. And they rarely eradicate. It's biological control. It's not, it's not extermination. So um, lots of times people would result to just cutting off the seed heads to control the disease or the spread of it, but they don't really control the plant. It's a very aggressive plant. It can, um, if you even break it off at the ground, it can re regrow from root fragments. So it's a very aggressive plant, which means that um, the entire removal of the entire plant is your safest, most effective, but most labor intensive method of control. So that means bring on the gains. You know, if we need to have something labor intensive and we want to do this, we need to reward people for doing it. Um, the short term goal would be to produce a successful summer event of tansy removal by property owners, neighbors, local volunteers, and neighbor in the neighborhoods in Delmar County. So just get the word out and encourage and have an, a reward to entice. Uh, the long-term goals would be to bring the community together to the benefit of our agricultural livestock and our native habitats. It would be to stop the spread, control the distribution, eradicate tansy ragwort in Del Norte County would be a wonderful long-term goal. It would be to educate the community on invasive species and the damage they can do. It would be to promote stewardship of um, the natural environment and our agricultural lands and to model cooperative working relationships. It would be to promote a positive together we can do something in the community. And um, it would hopefully develop a coalition of diverse groups all working to accomplish an impact on North County to our collective benefit. So those are our long-term goals. Um, it would be an advertised promoted contest with prizes to individuals, families, groups that bring in the most tansy within a given time period. So it wouldn't, we wouldn't want it to go on forever. We would you know, set the parameters. I'd like to do it in the summertime when uh, most of the tansy is flowering and easily identifiable. Tansy is a good invasive to start with because it doesn't have thistles and thorns to attack you when you try to pull it up. Um, transfer station is really already documenting how much tansy, the quantity of tansies that come in. So they're very well suited to um, take this on with a little addition to the work involved to actually document who's bringing it in. But, so there's not a lot of work involved in increasing to take this on as a project. Um, success would be measured by comparing this year's tansy halls to prior years and also trying, if possible, by having those tickets to determine how many people participated, which of course we don't know how many did last year, but it would just kind of give us an idea. If the weight of Tansy is up and a lot of people are bringing things in and a diverse group of people are bringing things in, it gives us an idea that people are engaging in the project. And um, I'd like to say that if you guys vote no, my life gets easier. I'm not, I'm not gonna be involved in trying to promote Tansy games, but I will continue to manage my fields, tansies. I will continue to work in removing tansy as it is creeping into Tallawa Dune State Park. It's, I worked last summer in um, um, Enderts Beach with Redwood National State Parks to remove tansy is creeping in there. Um, so I will continue to do that regardless. And, but I'm here to say maybe this is a way we could try. Maybe this is something that we could promote. And um, I do really thank you for what you do in terms of um, dealing with our recyclables, our trash, our invasives, and trying to bring a community together to work on making Del Norte the best it can be. So um, I thank you very much. Thank you, Jen. Anybody have any questions? Or Janitor for Mr. Ward? Yes. So if we were to do this, um, how would you monitor? Obviously, you monitor how it comes in. How would you? propose monitor, monitoring the actual games? We would work with uh, Ms. Gilbert to develop the rules about how the games are, because this is the first time we've done it, so we're not sure. 
But uh, in short, we do have a separate material type for tansy ragwort, and we put in the remarks uh, who was bringing this in or who, uh, which team they were working for. And then after the fact, we could uh, correlate uh, who brought in how much tansy by, from, for what team, and then okay. determine who brings in the most. So when it comes in now, do you monitor by pound it? Uh, we we weigh, weigh people in and weigh people out as we do for all customers, okay. but we do not track who brings in what tansy. Okay. Thank you. Um, you had discussed uh, prizes for the person who brings in the most. How would we be funding? Uh, we wouldn't necessarily be funding that. We, we're still. Uh, if the board is interested in pursuing this, we'll work with Ms. Gilbert and she'll we'll cast the net a little wider to look for other community partners, perhaps from the Ag Department, other folks who are interested in removing tansy, other folks who benefit from removing tansy. Um, but our intent is we're not doing this alone and we are not the sole drivers of this. It is intended as a larger community effort. Uh, possibly. Uh, I, other community efforts like this have looked for donation of prizes from major retailers in the area. I would expect similar. Okay. Okay. This, is <laughs> this is a great idea. Um, Tansy absolutely has to be tackled in this county. There's no question in my mind. There's various ways to go about it. In, in, in the organic dairy world, the way to tackle it is through soil health and management. It's, you could almost completely eradicate the species. And we've done an absolutely incredible job on Alexander Dairy doing it through soil health and management. But um, if your neighbors aren't doing it, which is really the point of this program, it's, it's almost futile to try to keep up with it. And um, you know, we've got a lot of neighbors around us. You mentioned state parks. Um, I really hope there's gonna be some focus on Tallow Dune State Park in this effort. Um, we have been talking with them for well over a decade about this issue and my hope is that there is a lot of focus there because we continue to get a lot of seed that blows onto us and I, it's obviously it's something that we control by hand and so it's extremely labor intensive, extremely costly, but well worth the time if you lose a, a large animal from it. So. Glad to see this effort taking place. Wish everybody the best success because uh, there's a lot going on when it comes to Tansy. So thank you. Mr. Ward, I just have a question regarding uh, budgetary uh, constraints mm -hmm. or lack thereof. Um, how would we adjust our budget uh, for this effort if, if we spent $6,300 last year an effort like this, if it was truly successful and it really got got a lot of engagement, I would think that, that we we might see that number double. We well, might. Um, how are we going to pay for that? I think at this point in time, our budget could could handle the additional uh, material, and it has a community benefit. So, if the board is interested in us pursuing this, then we'll continue to work with Ms. Gilbert. And before the games actually have an official kickoff, we would come back and review the rules of the game and how it would all work so that you are all familiar Perfect. with that. Yeah. So if you have any additional input that you'd like to offer at that time, there will be another opportunity. Absolutely, and ensuring that we work with the County Ag Commissioner because I know they put folks on point this last year going around to landowners to ensure that the tansy was being eradicated with potential penalty if they didn't. So. I did discuss this with uh, County Agricultural Commissioner Justin Riggs, and he was very supportive, and he would have liked to have been here, but he, he yep. just wanted to express his uh, very strong support for yep. eradicating That's tansy. terrific. Okay. You have anything else, ma'am? Okay. I, I think that I'm, I'm sensing consensus for staff to continue you, to work with you. Are. Thank you so much, Janet, for, for the idea, and, uh, and we look forward to seeing the program all put together and having a great community outreach this summer so thank you okay all right let's uh let's then return to uh item 2.1 and um under uh, our director's report and we will work through the remainder 
of our agenda for today. Mr. Ward. Okay, uh, thank you for the budget transfer approval. Um, we do have plenty of money in the budget. Uh, it, things have been readjusted. Probably the biggest thing I wanted to highlight to you on that was that our um, workers' compensation uh, payments have gone up dramatically. And that was a surprise. It was far beyond, uh, already, even though we're a little over half the year, we've more than, uh, we more than spent the entire amount that we budgeted for this year. Uh, Clinton Shad, the county auditor, generally will inform other departments in June what they can expect for their workers' compensation, but it, by June we've already adopted our budget. So that info. Uh, well, the, the issue is that um, the amount of workers' compensation is based on a five-year rolling average of the amount of claims that are submitted. And if a person is injured in a certain fiscal year, that, that's accounted for in that fiscal year, but of course the claim may expand in the dates that follow as they have additional procedures related to it. So uh, we have not had any new claims in the last few years, but the claims that we've had in the past five years are now catching up to us, and that's why our workers' comp went up. I, I was told it was five by uh, Whitney Bruder. So, but that's the reason why it went up. It, a little bit unpredictable, but we do have enough money in the budget to, to backfill that. I'll, I'll check into that. Okay. So that's that. Well, um, can, can we pause yes. there just for a second? I, I didn't understand in your staff report the 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 what you got from from the county from from Whitney. Mm -hmm. when, when when you look at the increased exposure, it says in fourteen fifteen claim costs increased from twenty thousand four to forty thousand. Yeah, and the very next year it says it increased from eighty dollars to to thirty three thousand. Right. Well, if fourteen fifteen was forty thousand, how does it it would it would appear to me that that fifteen sixteen de decreased from forty thousand to thirty three. I had the same exact confusion. And what she was trying to convey was that the claims filed in 1415 during the fiscal year 1415 had accumulated to 20,045. After the close of that fiscal year, there were an additional $20,000 on that one claim. So essentially each subsequent year, even though the claims were locked into the, the year that that claim was started, right. the expenses continue. So the final number is the actual is the actual number associated with the with the average that's correct and right. and so part of what you're seeing there is while those costs have now increased the amount that we have to pay for workers compensation you can see that in 1415 our total amount as you said was 40,000 1516 it was 30,000 uh, 1617 it's 1405 so so it is going down so I would expect in future after we hear, see this pulse of uh, increased costs on workers' comp, we would expect that it would roll down. I mean, that's just counterintuitive to me. If the trend is that it's going down and then have this, this jump of, of workman's comp going up double, I guess I would like, is that based on what happened, this five-year thing of what happened all the way back 12, yes. 13, 13, 14? Yes. Is, oh, okay. Okay. I, I will look into that. There were a couple incidents that the board at the time was informed with, uh, informed about, because there was, uh, in some cases, there were legal issues. And so in closed session, those issues were discussed at the time. Uh, uh, it was at the refuse sites that had to do with uh, the events and equipment and personnel at the refuse site, and there was an injury and then subsequent follow-up. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. 
continue on? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, we are continuing the holiday tree collection through the end of January. So if you've got a holiday tree, you want to bring it into the transfer station. Uh, no flocking. We need to be able to see that it's a green tree underneath. Remove the tinsel stands and, and decorations, but we will take that for no charge. And similarly, Recology, if you're a Recology customer, they will collect that from your house, but you need to call them to make an appointment. Their number is 464-4181. We're working with county staff to uh, look at the street side trash and recycling bins because uh, they've been damaged over time. And uh, part of that damage is uh, because the wind will blow them down and then the powder coating on them will chip and then the rust will finish the job. And so consequently, all of the county uh, pairs of street side bins need to be replaced. But we really want to establish concrete pads so that those, if we were to replace them with similar kinds of bins, we can bolt them down so that they're not being blown over, chipped, and then rust to death. So we're working on that. Uh, we have started outreach with a uh, group called the Eco Hero to do uh, outreach in our schools regarding uh, reducing contamination in our recycling. And uh, we're pl making plans that all public elementary and middle schools in Del Norte have a presentation. And then we're coordinating that with Recology Del Norte so that uh, specific targeted classroom presentations uh, presented by Chandra of, the, of Recology could follow up on that. Um, Let's see, continuing on, I have a summary of the audit, which I'll cover when we get there. Um, and one other item to, the two other items to make us all aware of. One is we are updating our software. We're going from scale management software version 8 to scale management software version 10. And we're planning on making that transition during the month of February so that we're live with that new program on March 1st. And we're working with Andrew Butcher of Digital Needs Services to make sure that happens. We're also um, at the early stages of working with the union representatives to update the memorandum of understanding between the authorities, uh, employees, and management as that expires at the end of this fiscal year. So probably we will be talking further about that at subsequent meetings. And with that, I'd, uh, I'll wrap up the director's report with a quick pointing out of the timeline attached uh, for SB 212, which is a product stewardship law pertaining to uh, sharps, that is uh, needles and lancets, and pharmaceuticals, uh, prescription medicines. Uh, so this is a take back program that we're anticipating will be rolled out somewhere in 2022, but there will be a lot of uh, lead up to that. Okay. So with that is the end of the director's report. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions about Mr. Ward's report. All right, let's move on to financials then, please. Okay, financials continue in the right direction. Uh, cash in the bank is a uh, million uh, forty-nine thousand one hundred two plus the hundred ninety-eight one seventy-seven for the last month's rent. Um, the accounts receivable, you can see that we're pretty current on that. We mostly are seeing uh, folks pay up by the end of the sixty days. So that's a uh, been a good turn of direction. Uh, in part based on the actions of the board, uh, accelerating the time in which we assess late payment fees. Looking at claims approved by director, you can see that the big charges were, of course, to Hamburg WSG for the good services they provide at the Del Norte County Transfer Station. And the next largest charges were for credit card service fees, because uh, a lot of people are using credit and debit cards at the transfer station, and collection of the uh, transfer station materials from the Klamath Transfer Station. Looking at our overall financials, uh, two things I'd like to highlight on that. First is that um, the, geez, I'm missing a report. Uh, at the end of the uh, transfer station reports, you'll see a year summary for both the Gasky and Klamath transfer stations. I thank Kathy Brewer for assembling this. But the thing that is really useful on those is you can see the relative revenue for the different days of the week for Klamath and Gasky. And that's really useful because you can see that um, uh, in the Gasky transfer station, when we're open on Thursdays, uh, that's a relatively small fraction of the um, business. And similarly, in the uh, 
Klamath Transfer Station when we're open on Fridays, again, a relatively small fraction of the business. It's a convenience to the customers, but as we look at the, uh, developing a northern transfer station, it's really useful to look at how uh, customers use the facilities. So I appreciate that. And I can see that my particular agenda packet does not have the, uh, the comparison of the fiscal years, but I know that we're in a positive uh, direction and that our cash balance is good. Our income is exceeding our projections. All right, any questions for Mr. Ward? Okay. Um, then we'll let's see, let me go back to. Uh, I think we're on to six one, sir. We are on to six point one, which is uh, our uh, election of officers, Mr. Ward. So each year uh, we have uh, the potential for new appointments, and I, for one, am grateful that we have the same board that we've had for the last couple of years. So as, from a staff perspective, this is a very fortunate circumstance because I really appreciate the experience each one of you are bringing to the, to the dais. So thank you for your continued service. But we do, uh, because there is the potential for new appointments, now is the time to elect officers. So we're grateful to Chair Inscore, uh, Vice Chair Howard, uh, Secretary Naffa, and Treasurer Controller Richard Taylor for serving as officers during the prior year. But here we are at the beginning of January of 2019, and it's time to elect new officers. The officers uh, to be elected are Chair, Vice Chair, and Secretary. The Treasurer Controller has to be a certified public accountant, and Richard Taylor has been contracted to provide those services. Uh, if the board chooses to change that, uh, then 30-day notice is required to end that relationship. Uh, staff are not recommending a change in that relationship, so at this time, we're just looking at the election of the chair, the vice chair, and the secretary. I'd make the motion to nominate Commissioner Cowling. Oh, I, I think it's, it's duly deserved with all the great work you've done throughout 2018 to take the lead. You, the experience that you've had on this board for the past years, maybe it's time for you to take the seat. I nominate you to <laughs> Supervisor Howard. Huh? You two done. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, yes, we... Do I, <laughs> these are too much, you're killing me. Do we have a, a uh, second for Supervisor or Commissioner Howard's initial motion? The, I'd, I'd ask our legal counsel to provide guidance on how the officer elections go, please. I don't think we have any specific process, so without a different process, we would just use our usual motion procedure. Okay. Which generally, the, uh, the first. The first well, motion. I don't have a second for a, either one of them. Yeah, we don't. This point. Yeah, we need to see if the first motion can get a second. Yeah, we do. Okay, Blake and Jason, well, who ultimately be, have be, to break, be, break this tie. We can be just as honored as you two. <laughs> <laughs> um, would you want to keep it? Is that what you're saying? Uh, no, I don't. No, I, well, uh, clearly uh, neither one of us knew you want to do it. So I don't mind. I just, I was just giving. Oh, oh, there you go. Well, then, I, then I'll second his motion. The first motion. So do we have a second for the, the second, second motion. motion? I, I think his vote has to get voted. Okay. That's right, just move on. I'll second, I'll second okay. the second motion. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, we take the second motion first. That didn't work out as well as you thought. <laughs> oh, it did, it did it. This is pretty interesting. You might wind up with this again if you're not watching careful, Mr. Enscore. Okay, so our second motion, which we will take first, is to elect uh, Chris Howard as the chair. Um, would you please pull the vote? Commissioner Cowan? Yes. Commissioner Greeno? Yes. Commissioner Howard? No. <laughs> Chair. Chair Inscore? No. <laughs> okay, I'll take chair. He has to take vice. How's that? We, we can't. Can. It has to be an alternate, right? 
No, I don't think there's anything in the JPA that dictates how the, we do this. Can we just figure it out? We can. Madam Castle? Yes. Is it? Okay, so um, it's only been tradition that we've had a it's not like one the, from the city and one from the county. Oh, well, Mr. Greeno would make a great vice chair. That's what I was thinking. Well, we, 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 I make a mo okay. we got to go can back we? to the chair. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so we have a set, our, our initial motion by my uh, Commissioner Howard to elect uh, Commissioner Cowan as chair. Would you pull that vote? Commissioner Cowan? Yes. Commissioner Greeno? Yes. Commissioner Howard? Yes. Chair and score? Yes. I All make, right. Okay, I make a motion to um, uh, make Commissioner Greeno our vice chair. Okay, I have a I'd second that nomination. And a second. Do I have any other nominations? Okay, we'll close the nominations. Will you pull that vote? Commissioner Cowan? Yes. Commissioner Greeno? Yes. Commissioner Howard? Yes. Chair and score? Yes. Very Except good. Mr. Commissioner Anath is not here. Can we elect him for secretary again? Yes, we can. Sure. I, I make a motion to elect Mr. Uh, Commissioner S Napa second as secretary. Second that motion. Motion and a second. Any other nominations? None. Opposed? Would you please pull the vote? Commissioner Cowan? Yes. Commissioner Greeno? Yes. Commissioner Howard? Yes. Chair and score? Yes. Very good. You're the chair. You can Congratulations. Run the rest of the <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, thank you. Uh, I guess the uh, we have the uh, the uh, the resolution um, that is generated via the letter that we have from CSAC. Do you want to address that, Mr. Ward? I, I thank Commissioner Howard for bringing this to our attention. Uh, he's uh, suggested that we present it to the board. I've reviewed it, and staff recommend that we adopt the authority resolution 2019-01 in support of a statewide commission on recycling markets. Essentially, it is uh, calling on the statewide government to uh, look at China's national sword, the way it's affected the overall uh, markets, and the way it's impacted local government's ability to meet their recycling goals. Okay. I make a motion to approve uh, resolution 219-01. I have a motion and a second. We have any public comment? Seeing no close public comment, would you please pull the vote? Commissioner Cohen? Yes. Commissioner Howard? Yes. Commissioner Greeno? Yes. Chair and Square? Yes. All right. The okay. audit. The audit. So generally the audit, uh, as uh, Mr. Taylor has reviewed this over the years and unfortunately couldn't be here at this meeting, the audit is generally, uh, if it gives you a clean opinion, that's a successful audit. And a clean opinion generally means that all of our documentation to the extent that it looked at, uh, it justified how we were spending the money, that we were spending it appropriately, that there were the checks and balances were all there and there was nothing, no indication that money was squirreling out in the wrong direction. Um, highlight of this audit includes the following. Uh, the authority's cash and investments at the time of the audit, which was the end of uh, June 2018, totaled 991, 941, plus the additional 198, 177. Uh, I, started to write this staff report, unfortunately, before the audit was complete, so some of the numbers uh, jostled a little bit. But essentially, um, at the end of fiscal year 1718, the authority had a net deficit position of 889,467, which basically means we're in the hole for that much. Um, and that was primarily caused by the post-closure liability of the landfill, which is uh, a liability of $2.284 million. So we have a net deficit position, but that net deficit position improved by over a quarter million dollars, meaning that we're digging ourselves out of the red hole that we're in. Um, the other thing that we did last year, well, two other big things, in addition to doing repairs at the landfill, doing repairs at the transfer station floor, we also increased the amount of money that we were paying towards OPEB and still our cash balance increased by 21,711. So that was a great year, yeah. I think. Not just a good year, a really great year because we're making our facilities more resilient. We're um, doing the people's business as efficiently as we can. And the audit reflects that. So uh, attached to the audit on the last few pages are the authority's uh, responses to findings. They make findings as part of the audit process and then we're required to respond to them. The two findings that they've made are related to, um, let me make sure I'm in the right part. 
the first one is related to the net deficit position. Basically, they're saying that uh, the authority should raise the fees to uh, customers of the Del Norte County Transfer Station or the franchise fees um, because they feel like we're in the hole and we need to dig ourselves out of the hole quickly. Our response regularly basically says, this is a community service. We don't want to overcharge for this service and the uh, rates that are set are set at the discretion of the board. And so those are political decisions about what's best for the community. So the board sets the rates and we are digging ourselves out of the hole. We consider that we're in debt and we're trying to dig ourselves out of a hole, but even if you were to raise the rates dramatically, it wouldn't change the fact that we're in a big red hole and we're still digging ourselves out. So you can choose what the rates are that are doing that. So long as we're continuing to make positive progress, I think it's a reasonable response to the auditor. The other comment that they've made is uh, regarding GASB 68 implementation. And this is uh, essentially one more layer of increasingly documenting our liabilities with respect to CalPERS and our retirement benefits. Uh, unfortunately, we cannot separate out the uh, authorities employees under the county's accounting system. So we're really waiting on the county auditor to be able to separate out the authorities employees. Because until we can do that, then we can't assess that liability separately. What's the, uh, can you explain that further? Um, when assessing the total amount of liability that the, this agency has to CalPERS, we need to be able to say, all right, these are our employees, and here's what we promised under CalPERS to them, so here's what our liabilities are. Until we can separate out our employees from the county's accounting system, then we can't get that number. And because what's, our, what's, our employees are all lumped in with all the counties. I, I get that piece. So I guess jump forward to what the, what's the difficulty with the auditor to, in doing this exercise for the waste authority? Uh, the, the county auditor has not yet separated out the authority employees from the information uh, of the county employees. And so we're not How able long to. does that exercise take? I don't know. With, this is a repeated finding, yeah. so it hasn't been done yet. Okay. So these are findings that he did. he's looking for something to show us, right? He's got to show that he's done the audit and there's got to be something. And these are the two things he's come up with. That's right. But in the past, we've never gone, no, I'm sorry. In the past, we haven't gone back and separated them out, have we? Not yet. Okay. Because okay. as a separate entity, we don't have yeah. the ability to do that. It would be a difficult task. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to assume that. that the county is in compliance with GASB 68. If they are not. No, they are then, working towards this end as okay. well. Okay, well then, then it really becomes something until, once the, even if it's not separated out, my, my feeling is, is that when the county comes into compliance with GASB 68 and their audit shows that that is, then we simply make a notation that says our employees are lumped in with the county, the county is in compliance, therefore we are in compliance. And I don't think trying to separate them out I don't think is going to get what what we want because when you to separate them out you're you're talking about using actuarial numbers for that group then independent of the rest of the county employees and I don't think that the auditor themselves is going to be able to do that function I think that because they're that that's a a, a state uh, calculation that's place then against the, that that group of employees because they're going to still be in the county as far as in their system because that's how the, the the contributions is made to CalPERS is through the county well, not by us I understand what you're saying but what I'm trying to ask is there any benefit to this commission by pushing the issue or not I, pushing the issue? I, I think the county auditor is very aware of this issue and I would expect that the county audit probably will have a similar comment so okay. it's probably going to be on the radar for both radar. of our agencies. And I guess I just took it as an informational item, yeah. not, that, not something to do yeah. about it. It was the way I took it. Am I wrong? Uh, this is the uh, regular audit. So uh, assuming, uh, so there is an approval process for the uh, responses to the findings. Okay. The, and we need to submit that as part of the formal response to the audit. Gotcha. However, if this has been a finding for every single year, we're not going to have a correction. I understand that, but why wouldn't we? I guess is what I'm okay. trying to get at. I don't know. It's a good question. Uh, the, uh, uh, looking at my notes, I see that this com same comment has been made for the last five fiscal years. 
I was just going to say that with the findings, the net, the deficit net position um, isn't something you would be legally required to correct, but GASB 68 is a legal requirement on each agency. So that's something that so it sounds like when it can be fixed, should be fixed. So it sounds like we need to have a conversation with the county auditor. Uh, and we have, and, and I told him straight up before this meeting that I was going to roll over on him. <laughs> he said, that's fine, and I, we reviewed the language. So we all know that this is a problem. If you would like to ramp up the formality of it, though, I'd be happy to write him a letter on behalf of the agency saying this is the Please. fifth year we've been cited for this, and yeah, we'd really I, like not to go into I, year six. I would feel comfortable with that. What about the rest of the board? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yes. Okay, yeah. I'd, I'd be happy to do that. Yeah, and he can you. even say we'd be willing to have a discussion. Yes. Right. Perfect. Okay. Lori and I could run point on it, or Lori and Jason actually. Could All run right. Point on it. So I will send a letter, and uh, if I could have either a vote or a consensus to to um, submit the corrective action plan proposed by the authority. I make that motion. I second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, any public comment? Okay. All, uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. All right. Very good. We. Uh, we're down to the last item, which is specifically, uh, well, it's not an item, but it, uh, Chair Score has said that he's not going to be able to make the Tuesday, February 19th meeting, and so I have confirmed that this room will be available on the following Tuesday, uh, February 26th. And if it's the board's pleasure, then that's when we'll have our next meeting. And since I'm no longer the chair, that's your call. I'm going to say yes. Um, I just hate having double back-to-back -back meetings after a supervisor well, meeting. It's hard. Then, then but I understand. didn't have it on the 19th. Get, the reason that I, that I brought it to Mr. Ward's attention that I didn't, if, if in fact I was still the chair, I, I, I don't like pushing that off on, on others. If, no, because I have agenda review that at the same time. So for me, actually, it works out Welcome better. to the party. <laughs> so well, I'm good with the 26 if everybody else is. Has anybody checked with Mr. Napa? Yes, and he, he is available that day. And Kira, are, will you send out a um, invitation? Thank you. So will that be at 4 o'clock? Yes, 4 o'clock, February 26th. Okay, I have a dentist appointment earlier that day, so hopefully I can talk. <laughs> that <laughs> okay very good then we are we are done and we will be adjourned until uh, Tuesday February 26th then thank you thank, thank you, you.